Welcome everybody to the VLSI problems and solutions. Uh, today we will discuss the glitch frameworks and what is the reason for using a glitch frameworks. So, uh, in this slide, I'm showing a typical digital module. Uh, here there is a clock source the coming from the oscillator and the BLL. And uh, there is a clock divider logic which creates uh, various clock, clock A, clock B, clock C, clock D. Um, these individual blocks, they get one of these clocks as inputs. And also there is a clock mux where um, the source is either clock C or clock D. In this slide, um, we will try to analyze the mux that can be used uh, as a clock mux. So this uh, schematic is for a simple clock mux where it uses uh, combinatorial gates to switch between clock one and clock two. Uh, clock one and clock two are different frequencies and also they can be asynchronous. The select is also is assumed to be asynchronous uh, to um, both the clocks or maybe synchronous to one of them. It doesn't really make much difference. Um, so whenever the select changes, uh, because there is no, uh, there are only combinatorial gates used, you can see that in on the output there is always a good probability of of a glitch getting created. Um, this glitch will propagate into further into the next logic and can cause metastability problems. So, uh, so that is why it is not advisable to use a normal mux as a clock mux. Friends, uh, in this slide uh, I'm sharing a, a really good circuit. Uh, which which will eliminate the glitch on the output clock. So in this circuit, what we're doing here is we are taking the select signal and we're synchronizing it in each of the clock domains. And the synchronized so the synchronized output is fed as a qualifying signal to the other clock domain. Um, if I um, so here, uh, the synchronized signal from clock one is fed back to the clock zero domain. Similarly, the synchronized signal from clock zero is fed back to the clock one uh, domain. So um, this helps in making sure that the synchronization is complete on both sides of the clock, on the both the clocks, uh, because these clocks are of different domain, uh, so different frequency, and, and then the switching happens. Two things that you have to keep in mind for this circuit is that both the clocks, clock zero and clock one, have to be running uh, in order to switch between the clocks. If, if any of the clock is off, then the switching will not happen. And that's a, that's a big problem because your output will be shut off. And during this, the second point is during the switching time, the output is temporarily off and then the new clock takes effect. So in your simulations, uh, you have to keep these two things in mind. Thank you very much.